You are nothing in front of me. Over Tyson, one more over Tyson. Because I have the, f I, I had the first one over him. I'm intending to have the second one. <laughs> and he been bitching about it, which is true. Next question. I have already tell you, I tell you, your only chance is in the ring, in the boxing ring with the boxing rules. When you step off or that ring, you better stay five meters away before I stuck your shit. Because if I lose it, you're gonna have a really bad time, my friend. So, stay, respect the fact that boxing is protecting you, us, and the rules of boxing is protecting us. Because out of that, without that, you are nothing in front of me. I will beat, I beat you every day. Twice on Sunday. I've had to tell him off in front of a lot of the people, yeah, because he's having a lot to say on camera. I can't really tell how good Ngannou was because I had a lot of problems in that fight. Uh, we all know it was a shit performance. I'm not going to make any excuses because I never do. However, um, however, um, I don't know how good he was, but one thing I do know is I hit him with some good punches and, and I hit him with a, an elbow right in the face. I never budged him. So I don't know how good he's boxing. He has gloves on and he didn't budge anywhere. So it's a good fight. Here's the thing. <laughs> It's a fight. The one thing I do know about Ghana is he's a tough son of a gun. I guarantee when we fight again, I'll tie one hand behind my back and punch his head off. Yeah. So, going into this fight with Joshua, at first I was hoping Joshua would beat him so we could do the fight after a beating Usyk with Joshua. Um, but the more Francis is going on with himself, really, really give him a beat down next. Listen, it's no secret I didn't have a great performance against um, Francis. I had a lot of stuff going on. I don't make excuses. It was what it was. I make excuses. Um, but it was a shit performance. It was a shit fight. When have you ever seen Tyson Fury throw three fucking punches in a round? Ever. And the most active heavyweight that's ever been in history. What was up with you then, Tyson? I, I don't want to go into it because it's making excuses. And listen, I don't make excuses. But yeah, you indicate you won in a bad performance. Exactly, yeah. I've won on my worst night. So I proved time and time again. I can always win, even on the shittest nights in history. What happens with an on-form Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou? Listen, I don't think we need to think. I think everybody knows what happens. Um, one hand tied behind me back and up on one leg, really. We'll see. Hopefully he wins, so we can, um, I can punch his face right in next time. Do you think he will win tonight? I don't know. He's got a good chance. He's a giant man, isn't he? He's tw outweighing Joshua by 20 pounds of muscle. It's like, the, it's like a battle of the biggest, uh, who can lift the most weights and who's got the better body. And I think Ngannou is winning 10 nil. So yeah, listen, it's a, it, the two big lumps and they're both gonna be throwing bombs, but I don't know who wins. Like I said, I said in an interview the other day with Coogan, I, don't, I can't tell you how good or bad Ngannou is because he never fought Tyson Fury on the night. And I, I can't, t honestly, tell you how good or bad he is. The one thing I can tell you is he's a tough old boy because he took some thunderous punches about the head. Um, but apart from that, the one thing I can tell you is though, he, he doesn't have much boxing ability because he can't follow up on a punch. Hence, when he hit me with a shot side of the head and dropped me, he couldn't land another real worthwhile punch. And so it was what it was. So normally when you land a, a big one to a left hook, it puts a dent in someone who you see a reaction, you can see yeah, it yeah, visibly. Yeah, didn't put any reaction on him. But I'm not sure if that was to do with the fact that I had, a, I had my own issues going on, or he is just a tough cunt. Either way, AJ's going to find out tomorrow. <laughs> tonight. <Well>, tonight. <laughs> Wait, we will find out, yeah. Listen, yeah. It'll be, uh, I don't think it'll be a shock if Nganu wins. And listen, anything can happen, the big man, aren't they? When I was fighting Nganu, everyone was saying it was a shit fight. Like, even, even the British media and radio and everybody, he shouldn't be fighting him, this is a mismatch, yada, yada, yada. And then when he goes in there and, and goes, does a good fight in that, it sort of yeah, gives him credibility. And, and now, all of a sudden, they know he's a combat fighting man. Like I was saying when I was fighting him, this guy's no more, he's not a YouTube fighter. The man's a, a, a fighting man who's been punched in the face with small gloves on, kicked all about the head. Seen Francis so he's no, uh, he's no mug. and so, Mike yeah. Tyson. Who will see you win the fight? Old trainer, it's got the pads on. It's in the open workout. I hope he's kidding along and he's playing possum here. I hope that's a joke and intended to be a laugh. Because if it's not, 
He ain't got a prayer. Guys, no, no, it's not a YouTube fight. Won't get out of the first round. It's probably going to be Tyson's uh, quick fight. Man, he's been punched in the face. But you know what? It's got to be kidology. That it's got to be fun and games. So he's no way. That's what he's got. So yeah. Well, God help him. We'll see who wins the fight. That's all I'm saying. But for the reasons that's embarrassing. If that's what he can do on a public workout, don't bother doing a public workout. It's a disgrace. He was essentially like saying that a boxing ring protects you, and if you went outside man to man, he'd have you. He said that at the press conference to you. Let me tell you. If he comes outside for me, he won't be walking away from me. And that's a fact. What do you think I'm going to do? Let him elbow me and punch me in the face and whatever, grab me and break my arm? He won't be leaving the outside. And I tell you that. And he knew that the other night when I told him straight. Tyson, cuts up. Listen, let me tell you something straight from the heart, yeah? If I never had as much respect as I do for Turkey, I'll shake, right? I'd have got up the other night and punched his cunt right in for him. But I didn't want to cancel another show for Turkey. I've already cancelled one with a cut eye. If I got up and set about him the other night at the press conference, yeah. Why the fuck you lying? Why are you always lying? Oh my god. Stop there you go. And I'll have been in big trouble as well. I'd have got done, but well, you probably would. All the big mouths always run to the, the, the people tell me they don't even know which eye it was now. <laughs> Honestly, I've had it four or five times. Which eye did you get cut on? So, yeah. For that reason, it's. Um, Definitely going good. Mm. Thoughts on the ten million dollar forfeit? It is what it is, mate. I've got no uh, no real thing uh, to say about it. It is what it is. How is it dealing with His Excellency Tyson? Listen, I don't class His Excellency as a bank check. I class him as a close friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope that he could come to me and tell me something. Can I hope that I could come to him and tell him something? Do you know what I mean? Like, don't forget, all these boxing is out here because of me. And that's a fact. Like when, when I brought Turkey Al Sheikh to boxing, there was no, uh, he, didn't, he wasn't involved in boxing at that time. And then he, when, when he did the deal with me, it opened all this up. So like all these boxers and things, yeah, they're, only, they're out here because of me, because I started all this off. Well, Frank got a lot of heat at, before the Ngannou fight. You know, he was going on media outlets saying this is a game changer. No one believed him, but clearly he has been. <laughs> Yeah, listen, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a, a very, very uh, unusual um, circumstance. I'm going to take some credit for this, that I was the first person to come here and fight here in Battle of the Baddest, and through me, all these avenues have opened, and obviously for Turkey to be the one putting all the dog and everything else. <laughs> but I, I know he won't mind me saying that that was the, uh, yeah, like you said, Frank, the catalyst was bringing the GK over here and now every sportsman on the planet wants to come to Saudi Arabia following the Gypsy King's footsteps <laughs> which is uh, fantastic I like being a pioneer but um, I, have, I have no fear of OSAC because I know that um, God's will will be done and whoever his chosen man is then he will be done he will win because that's how our life works and when you've got faith like I am, I know no, nobody can stand in front of me or no, no weapon that's raised against me shall prosper. Any of them, they won't prosper. I said it to Wilder face to face when he was talking about idle gods and stuff. I can't stand in the light. And we're going to find out which one is the chosen one. And I've got faith to believe it's me. And usic has got faith to believe it's him. And we'll see whose faith strands up the longest because I'll tell whoever you now believes what it people the most, are going to say when I flatter there is nobody else. I am the chosen he was one. too small. It was a mismatch. Um, he was never true. any good to Tyson. It was a mismatch. When Which is all right, I thought. Who's second anyway? The boss in this division, in this game, send me in. Do you think you destroy Alexander Usyk? I, no. I know yeah. it. Well, I don't. I think I the it. jab of mine. I, I'm a lot quicker than him. Yeah. I've got better movement than him. I'm tougher than him, and so on and so forth. Has he got anything on you, Usyk, or not? Has he got anything on me? Hmm. Not that I can think of. Listen, if he, if he was a cruiserweight, then he might have the agility to move and bend a little bit better. But considering he's put on 25, 30 pounds since then, one, I've never met a heavyweight who's ever been as quick as me. And two, he doesn't come from that type of background where he can outspeed me or out maneuver me. I've said it time and time again, yeah? I've got that American style with the European conditioning. I've never met a European man 
a man with well, his hands up around his face moving his head a little bit like a European um, amateur yeah. who can beat me say no more I, I look at Usyk he's a stiff white man who moves his head a little bit and moves his feet that's how I look at him I've never met a stiff white man who could ever out- outbox me ever in my life amateur, pro, sparring, anything ever but I ain't here to slate him I'm just telling facts from a very experienced man who's been around boxing my whole life was it a low blow? hell no it was right on the belt and he had his shorts up around his fucking tits it was, his shorts was up and when he got hit the shorts was up and after he got up he pulled them right down that's a fact too so he got, he got knocked out with a body shot which isn't the end of the world because he's a big old boy um, Dubois a big strong man and he could probably knock a hole in a wall which everyone can at this game is that something that your team bring up at the rules meeting the day before the fight about him complaining to the ref? That ain't up to me. That's up to my team. Um, and I'm sure they'll do a good job. And what we don't want in this fight is controversy. We don't want oh, a bad decision because his country's at war and they side with the man who's at war in uh, oppressed. We don't want if buts and maybes. Oh, he's, he's got a low blow when he didn't. Did he didn't? We don't want any of that. We want it to be a clear decision where if I lose, give it me the loss. Give it me the loss. If he loses, give him the loss. I don't want no favours in life, yeah? I never have and I never will. All I want is a fair, fair, fair fight. At the end of the day, that's all we want. We're two high profile sportsmen in our perfected divisions and weights, whatever, and countries. Whoever wins, let them win. It's a boxing match who I don't think will get past the jab. And that's being honest. Because if you've got a man leaning forward like that, like AJ, like Dubois, like Derek, like Willspoon, hop, 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 slip round them, get round the sides, bang, bang, bang. But how do you deal with somebody who's like that? And I've got an 86 inch reach. So he's gonna jump in with his jab, I'm just gonna go pop. Where's he gonna go? Here. He's got an 80, he's got 74 inch arms. So unless I go, Go oh, on, it be all about the head. He's not going to land on me, is he? And if he does all that, mm. I love all that. I bring a marking up sideways and oh, sidewinders right up the middle. Here's the thing: he moves his head like that, the body don't move. So move your head, I'll cripple you to the body. I don't care either way he wants it. He, it's very difficult for him and his team to beat me. Their only way of beating me was oh, he had a bad performance against Ngannou, so. Cliche is, his legs are gone, he's old, he's had a lot of wear and tear, he, he hasn't lived the best lifestyle. That's what they're banking on. But the way I beat him is, if I want to talk up and get forward and throw a million punches and get him out of there, put out, box him, box him at mid range, counter punch him, any way I want to beat him, I can beat this guy. I can bring him into a dogfight and let's see if he can stand up to a 270 pounder, banging away his body. I know I can take his punches at 210 pounds, whatever he is, but he won't stand up all night to a 270 guy who's banging out with him, who's got stamina to burn, for sale, by the way, and who can box all night at any pace. So it's been a long old time and I'm a very experienced campaigner and I can in any situation. So maybe I'm just uh, deluded in my own ability, but I don't think so. I think it'll be a... Um, a good fight for me. I think he's gonna, with the reputation he's got now for beating Joshua, I think he'll again. It's um, gonna be a fantastic night. I advise everyone to tune in on the uh, 18th of uh, May for the undisputed fight, which is, in my opinion, is the fight of the century. Because tell me the last time, other than me and Wilder, when two undefeated heavyweight champions fought each other for the world title belts, but more than that, it's for the undisputed. When Holyfield Bow, was that the last time? Undefeated fighters. When was that, back in the 90s? 30 years ago? Over 30 years. History making stuff. History making. I, I liken this fight to the great fight of uh, Gene Tunney versus Jack Dempsey. And I take it back to that, that was the last fight of the century. And I believe this is the fight of the century. So we should, we should appreciate this moment. You appreciate it because I'll tell you what it's going to be. It's going to be a long, long time again before you see two undefeated heavyweight champions fighting for their undisputed uh, belts. A very long time. <laughs>